In this video, you're going to hear my exclusive government phone call with Department of Energy staff about the containment of antimatter. Here's what I got back in the Freedom of Information Act request. The Department of Energy is not required to conduct fishing expeditions of its many locations. You placed a $50 limit on your request for the containment of antimatter. With your request as structured, fees would be astronomical to search every Department of Energy location for every type of record. Now, I don't know if that matters to you or not, but I kind of feel like it anti-matters, and that's why I gave this FOIA officer a call. You do not want to miss this. Hey, uh, is this? Yes, it is. This is uh, Joe. I got your email yesterday regarding the uh, FOIA request on antimatter yes, storage. Yes. So, uh -huh. I wanted to take you up on your offer to, to give me a hand with this because I I was reading in your response. I know this is frustrating for you guys. Originally, you were going for antimatter, and then you narrowed it with Llewellyn Smith to. Um, uh, information regarding DOE funded research into the storage of antimatter and the development of technologies to use antimatter as a fuel source for propulsion. Yes. With the short time frame ranging from 1195, because I think your original request was from 1960. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. I see how now it's broad, and and it's really important. I'm not trying to be difficult or you know make you guys engage in frivolous research um you know i have a doctor myself so i'm familiar with the the process i really don't know how far back doe's research into antimatter actually goes and so that's why my initial request was that broad okay um but help me help you you tell you ask me <laughs> you ask me what i need what, what i can tell you and i'd be happy to um assist in any way well, the first thing that we would have to do is figure out, um, DOE funded research is funded in a lot of different ways. Uh, we fund research at the national laboratories. Um, we fund research through grants, uh, which to the tune of like 4,000 a year. Okay. <laughs> so, in our office anyway here, and that's just our office. So. There's so many different ways you can go with something like this when you're looking at a specific subject matter. Okay. Um, even the subject matter of your narrowed request, I, I just don't even know where to go first. All right. So if there's a, a particular national laboratory you have in mind or a particular project or... Yeah. I, so I was thinking about the, the kind of thing that got me onto this was that I know that the United States Air Force is engaged in, has funded and engaged in research at, well, it was Washington State University Center for Materials Research. It's CMR. And uh, CMR receives extramural funding from DOE as well as the, and what they say on their website was the National Lab System. And the quote in WSU.edu's uh, response on this was there was a doctor kelvin lynn l-y-n-n -N, is in november and then mark weber w-e-b-e-r and dr weber was quoted as saying that quote they have stored electrons for up to one second the goal is to store them in the trap for hours even a day and then he says for starship travel we want to store positrons for hundreds of years and this involved large-scale production of antimatter fuel, and there was some involvement in ener providing energy for space shuttles or space planes. So from a DOE standpoint, I also know that there was an announcement by DOE and the European Laboratory for Particle Physics on uh, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And on DOE's website, it was also stated that DOE was, uh, DOE was involved in funding and working with CERN on something that was called the Alpha Project. Okay. There was a collaboration, and the collaboration was happening 
by DOE, Office of Science, and the National Science Founda Foundation at the University of California, Berkeley. Okay. So, does that help? That helps. We, we're at Berkeley now. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, and Berkeley is one of mine. Cool. Um, so you got the right FOIA officer anyway. Awesome. Well, Lou Allen um, did a good job forwarding me to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there were, um, you know, it, it was hard for us to know whether, like, who all would have done this this kind of research. Yeah. So, um, the Alpha Project. Let's start with that. Uh, okay. And the article on DOE's website... Uh, which was titled June 1st, 2017, and I believe it was under Fusion, Shining Light on Antimatter. So we're narrowing down to Berkeley. I think it's a good way, good place to start for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if they've got... Well, the other, yeah, the other thing is, if we don't all the way hit on what you need mm -hmm. um, in this request... You know, we can also, because we're, gonna, we're working toward narrowing to something that we can actually conduct a search on right now. Right. Um, and if, for some reason, we narrow too far or something happens like that where, you know, when we're narrowing to certain records at Berkeley or when we get to that point, um, then it will be like, if you want something else, you can just email me at another request will do, okay. do this, you know, and work through it. Okay. So that would be just fine. All right. Um, I appreciate that. It's it's very sure. it's very kind of confusing uh, to wrap my head around when I get no responsive documents and I'm like, well, yeah, but there's an article on your website, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. the back and forth on it. It's helpful. Yeah. Well, I always have to start with, you know, we've got to get our head around this first. <laughs> yeah, totally. There, at this point, you know, I've got six national laboratories under my purview. Okay. And I have, you know, so... I, Which I have ones? no idea where to go. Which ones are you under, under your purview? Ames, Argonne, Fermi, Brookhaven, Berkeley, and Princeton. Okay, so there was also a mention. That's a lot. There's, there's yeah, a, there's, there's a uh, a mention, I believe, in also some of the articles um, of, I believe it was Brookhaven as well. So there might there might be some stuff there, but maybe if we start at Berkeley, we'll It'll kind of lead us to where else you need to go. Maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Now, um, the types of records. If, if, you know, if I find, I can probably find out from Berkeley where within their lab they do this type of research. Let's just start with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at the DOE site, too, and see, see, you know. Now, this Alpha Project, because I know nothing about this Alpha Project. You probably know more than I do. Mm -hmm. Um is, do you know if Berkeley was involved in the Alpha Project? Is that how this works? Uh, well, they collaborated okay. on uh, the Alpha Project at University of California, Berkeley. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're... And that was directly with DOE and Office of Science and NSF. Okay. University of California, Berkeley... Um, University, <laughs> separate from the lab. <laughs> I guess is that right? Is that right? Is yeah. that how, okay? University of California operates Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory for DOE under a prime contract. University of California Berkeley is the university, and they do some research too. Okay. So everything at University of California Berkeley has nothing to do with our prime contract, unless that crosses over to research that's done at the lab. But we, we can do a search of the lab and see okay. where, where that takes us. Um, and I think, you're, I think you're on the right track on that because uh, as part of the this alpha experiment that was done at CERN, it says uh, DOE works with CERN through several affiliate laboratories. Most importantly of these is the Berkeley Lab, which identifies itself as, quote, a U.S. Department of Energy National Laboratory managed by the University of California. So I, I think right. you're, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, then let's talk about the records themselves. Okay. Because if I can get to the place in Berkeley, you know, the, the research area in Berkeley where they're doing this, then the records themselves is what I need to know next. So, um, if, if there's stuff going on like this, maybe reports, mm-hmm. is, would reports be a good place to start? If we start with email and communications and all those kinds of records, yeah, um, that's going to take us into a place that's going to cost you way more than the $50 you put on your Right. Request. Well, I want to talk to you about that, you know, in, in a second, because I just, I, it, I just kind of blanked out when I put the request in. I, I want to do a fee waiver um, request on it, but and I'll give you justification for that. Um, but the t- the types of data, yeah, I don't want to get into emails and all that kind of stuff and phone calls. But what I'm looking for, I guess, is research proposals, um, maybe reports like you had mentioned of research experimental findings. Maybe a really easy one that could be yes or no is if there's any video or audio of uh, research meetings or workshops involved in this alpha uh, project i would i would assume that if it's at a lab they probably have meetings now i don't know if the the recordings would be uh releasable you know okay but so so we're talking about the alpha project and whatever research area at berkeley is working on the alpha project at CERN. yes or collaborating on that project correct um, and I think and they call it the alpha experiment, so I just don't want to get the wrong terms. <laughs> okay. All right. And then research proposals, um, reports, or any video or audio um, on meetings or workshops. Yeah. Or the like. like. Okay. Okay. All right. Um... Now, what I'll do is I'll put together an email. Okay. I will send you an email and kind of uh, setting out what we've decided is going to be your narrowing for this request. Okay. Um, and then if you could either reply and say yay or uh, make any small changes to that, you know, adjustments based on if I got something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Will do. That would, Respectfully. That would be helpful. And then that way I can go to Berkeley and I can say um, that this, these are the records that you want from, and you're still wanting the same dates? Um, let me take a look at that and just see if we can narrow it even more. Okay. I think we ended with 95 to 2019, and I... I think we can go ahead and narrow it even more. Um, and the reason why is because in one of these reports it says that DOE has been involved since the beginning of, of CERN with this particular alpha experiment. June 2011. So let's do 6 1 2011 to current. Okay. Alright, so I'll just put today's date. Yeah. Um, they. I know this is an ongoing... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we have to have some kind of cutoff date. And so it would be the date that I would put, like, probably today. We'll do today and then that way. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Um, And then Berkeley will come back to me and let me know how extensive this is, what they have, what they don't have. Um... I know uh, headquarters has categorized you as another, so I can't change it to anything else. Okay. Um, as far as, you know, you're not news media, education, scientific, um, they, they've already categorized you, so I can't change that. Um, fee waiver, I, I mean, I don't have justification right now, for fee waiver, but whatever you want to send, you know, we can consider. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we'll just take it from there. Can I can I try it out on you and see if it's it's even worth going down that road? Uh, sure. Okay. So uh, I run a non-commercial uh, science and technology YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So it's 
hobby, personal hobby, and being yeah. you know, having a background in science myself, I am reporting uh, information that has not yet been disclosed from the government to the public. Um, okay. And so I feel like it would definitely increase the public's understanding of the operations specifically of DOE in relationship to uh, these kinds of partnerships and specifically this kind of research experiment. I try to make the information, the raw data y'all give me, very easy for people, average people, to understand who don't have these sorts of backgrounds. Ah, okay. So. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a little iffy because of the fact that it's the distribution piece. When you have like a blog or a, a website or some place where people can come and view your information, mm -hmm. that's good, but to meet the fee waiver criteria, you have to more have more of a distribution. Similar to that of a newspaper or a, you know, there has to be some outreach. Like, uh, how can I say, uh, it's the distribution piece. It's like if you, uh, you have subscribers that have like, um, however many, you know, you have a, a number of subscribers. Like I have about- thousand people mm -hmm. that you, that you, distribute to um, a significant understanding of the public or the public significant un under contributing to the significant understanding of the public of the government activities is where you have to go and that's that's harder to reach when you're doing what you're doing <laughs> I understand and when you're a news media agency um, but you know that doesn't so I've got about I've I've got about uh, 7,500 subscribers at the moment that watch my videos, and I know the Defense Technical Information Center has already classified me as news media, which is really weird. Um, and I've gotten a lot of different fee waiver uh, exemptions approved by uh, NRO as well as uh, U.S. Air Force. Yeah. So. Um. Headquarters hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> okay. See that. See that's where I'm trying to understand. I guess. Yeah. So we're not there yet with your um, with your category. Okay. Um. So I'm trying to stay within the fee boundaries. I don't want to, you know, get into. You know, I can put this though to to, to Berkeley. I can ask them what it would take for a search. Mm hmm. Um of, you know, their, whatever research area handles this um, alpha experiment or project. And then we might go back and forth a couple times before we get to what we can give you within <laughs> yeah. normal constraints, you know? I got you, yeah. So I'll definitely work with you back and forth here and try to get you whatever we can within um, a reasonable amount okay so let me take this what I have I will send you an email mm -hmm. um, will it, it will set out the narrowing June 1st 2011 to August 1st 2019 um, Berkeley Alpha experiment research <laughs> I'll just go through it <laughs> yeah you know and narrow it to that like I say if, if we miss something or uh, inadvertently excluded something out of this that you end up wanting mm -hmm. uh, we can do you know I mean there is no limit to the number of FOIA requests you can make too, okay so. good good so yeah alright so let's start there and I have your email address and I'll go ahead and email you the narrowing and then we'll get started awesome I really appreciate okay. your help thank you okay thanks for the call you betcha have a good day okay bye you too bye bye You place the $50 limit on your request. Is that what's that?